Hi there, I'm Jim, one of the solutions engineers with Edge Impulse, and today I'm going to be taking you through an end-to-end -end demo looking at how we can use physics simulations to generate an accelerometer data set for this device, the Thingy 53. Now, in this case, I want to predict the height of which it's been dropped, but I don't want to have to drop it a thousand times to generate that data set because it might do some damage. I'm happy to drop it a few times to test at the end, and we'll see that in real life, but I want to see if it's possible to create a, a physics simulator representation of this object, generate our data set, and then use that to predict the height at which it's dropped in real life. And I'll take you through that in just a second. So today I'm going to be using the Nordic Thingy 53 dev kit, which is a little device with a number of different sensors on board and a battery. And most importantly, it integrates really nicely with Edge Impulse for testing purposes because we can collect data from it wirelessly. So what I want to do today is show the power of dataset synthesis when it comes to generating uh, accelerometer data or physical data. We've looked at generating image data before, and we've also looked at generating audio data in terms of keyword spotting. But what about if what you want to measure is in the physical realm and is based on physics? What we can do in those situations is generate a data set using a physics simulation. And this can be really useful if you don't have access to the end environment where your product's going to be used. For example, it's a production line and it's really busy and there's not very much downtime allowed. Or even if the product that you're trying to test doesn't exist yet physically, you could use a CAD model to create a real physics simulation. Now there are some limitations to physics simulations and the main one is that the uh, physics simulated world is only as good as the inputs that you put into it. So today you'll see that I've had to simplify this problem down and as a result the, the accuracy isn't perfect but it's a really good indicator that with a bit more work and some characterization of materials and friction and restitution coefficients that's really accurate, you can get a pretty good model going. I've set up a project here in Edge Impulse to do this test with, and it'll be available as a public project after this video in the link below. Today I'm going to use this Python notebook, which is available in our GitHub Edge Impulse Notebooks repository which has a number of different useful notebooks for running through examples of using data synthesis and other tools. But in this case, I've loaded it up and all you need to get started is Python locally, the pip package manager to install a couple of packages, uh, Jupyter notebooks installed so that you can run through the notebook locally, and then PyBullet itself is the main dependency. So PyBullet is a, a Python binding of the Bullet Physics SDK, the Bullet Physics SDK is a, a physics engine which is quite often used in robotics, but it can be used to represent the real world uh, virtually really well because it's got a good physics engine. So to start with, we're going to install our dependencies, import all of the necessary uh, libraries for today. So in order to properly simulate this device, which is the Nordic Thingy 53, which I showed you earlier, we need to create a virtual representation of it. Now, the way that PyBullet does that is with the Universal Robotics Description Format file, which is an XML file just describing the object and its characteristics. Now, you can give it just dimensions, but in this case, I went a little bit further and created a CAD model of uh, our object. And you can see here, here it is. And it tries to give a pretty good representation of the dimensions of our object, which will help when we drop it so that the collisions happen correctly. And that's imported into this URDF file with this geometry um, tag. The only other thing we need to give it is its mass and inertia. So that just lets the physics engine know how to characterize it as it's falling. So I've saved that and it's available uh, in the assets folder of the GitHub repository here, but it'll be automatically accessed through the code that's coming up. So later on, we're going to be running PyBullet in a headless mode so that we can just run through a huge sweep of different parameters and generate data for each one. But it also has a graphical mode where we can see what's happening. So I've written a small script to just show what will be simulated when we do one drop. And you can see there... we had our object dropping from various different heights, starting at different orientations. So that gives an idea of what we're going to be working with later. Starting off, 
we've just got to set up our simulation environment. That involves initializing a physics client, setting our gravity to Earth's gravity, loading in our object file, loading in a plane for the object to fall onto, setting the maximum sample length we want to achieve and the sample frequency. So 100 hertz is the frequency of uh, the output of the accelerometer on the Thingy 53. So that's the sample frequency we'll use. We need to define our output folder and check that it's, um, that it's empty. And if not, then we'll delete it and make it empty. I'll just run that. And we need to define our drop parameters. So this is the sweep of parameters that we're going to go over. So I'm going to choose 100 heights ranging from 0.1 to 0.8 meters. And that makes sense. I'll show you the test setup later. But that's the range of sort of heights that we're going to be trying to target here. And we're going to do 20 different simulations per height. That's because later on you'll see that for every height we're going to drop at random different orientations to make sure that we get a good spread across the range. Now we also need to define the characteristics of the IMU on this device. And if I go to the sensor that is on the circuit board here, I can see it's the Bosch BMI270. And there's all of the technical data here which I've passed through into these um, these variables here. Now this is necessary because what we'll be outputting is basically just the actual acceleration of our uh, simulated object but the accelerometer on here has certain characteristics like um, a maximum G sensitivity so everything above that is clipped and then also a resolution so the um, we need to add that into our simulation so that the output is as similar as we can get to the IMU from the Thingy 53. We're also going to give the object and plane some properties uh, to allow for bounce. In this case, I'm going to be dropping the Thingy 53, which is a pretty hard object, onto a hard surface, uh, a wooden table. So I've done a little bit of testing, and this seems to be the best results. But if you can absolutely characterize all of your materials really accurately, then that will give you the best output at the end. This is really just sort of a scrappy test. What I will say, though, is if you're going to drop your object onto something like a carpet, then um, that's obviously going to have very, very different characteristics to a hard surface, and physics simulating a carpet is a little bit more difficult. So just bear that in mind when you're doing this sort of uh, physics simulation. You might not get the results you expect unless you take into account all of the physical um, attributes of the environment. So now for the drop simulation itself. We're going to start by uh, iterating over all of the heights and then for the number of simulations per height, what we basically do is set a random orientation for our object. And then we need to initialize some variables to get the initial object position and velocity so that we can then calculate the uh, differential of the velocity as the steps go on to get the acceleration. We need to set up the output file for each, um, each fall. And then we'll simulate for up to the sample length, stepping through the simulation, calculating the linear and angular velocity of our object with respect to the ground. And then we also need to calculate it with respect to the object itself, because the IMU on uh, this device is orientated, obviously, with respect to this box rather than with respect to the earth plane. So we need to convert that uh, earth plane acceleration into a relative acceleration for this box. So we do that here, we scale or, or clip the acceleration to plus minus 2g and then round it to the resolution, and then save each file to uh, the output folder. So we append the metadata for each file to a list here, which then once we've run this, gets saved to an output file, a JSON file, which our command line uploader takes in so that it knows the label for every single file when we upload to Edge Impulse. So I'll just run this now. Okay, so we've simulated all of those drops. And if we go in here, we can see our output folder is full of CSV files for every single drop, which is great. And finally, what we need to do is save our metadata to an output JSON file and then disconnect the physics simulation. Now all we need to do then to get that up into Edge Impulse is to go into our command line, 
CD into our output folder and then use the Edge Impulse uploader with this flag for the info file to pass in all of the information that we need. So I'm just going to copy that and go over to my terminal where I'm inside my output folder. And then I'm going to run Edge Impulse Uploader with the info file files.json. There we go, we're uploading all of our files and we should see them start to appear over in data acquisition. You can see all of our files have uploaded into Edge Impulse here and they're all visible. And we can go into Impulse Design now and we're going to choose a window size of 2000 milliseconds, which is the maximum for our input samples. Window increase of 1000, keep the frequency as our frequency of the Nordic device, zero pad our data. We're going to choose a raw data block. I found this works best for this particular um, scenario. And a regression block for our learning block because we want to get a value for the dropped height of our object when it's dropped. Save that impulse, go into raw data. I'm going to scale these axes down because our output is in a range of 0 to about 1, but our input is in a range of 0 to 20. So we, we really want that to be in a similar kind of um, order of magnitude to get the best results. So we'll save that as our parameters. Generate our features. Our features have trained, and you can see that there's a really nice spread in the Feature Explorer from our low heights to our high heights. So this indicates that we're going to have a good time training our regression model in a second on this synthetic data. Go into our regression model. And I'm going to just adjust these few settings to give it a better chance of generating a good model. Add another dense layer with a few more neurons. And then we'll start our training. The model's trained, and this looks like it's not such a good result, but sometimes it's worth just double-checking whether there's uh, a bit of degradation because we've used the quantized model. So if we go into unoptimized, we can see that we're getting very little loss here, which is much better. And the ohm device performance still stays within the realm of an MCU, so it's probably worth just sticking with the unoptimized model for now. We can always tune this later. This is really just a first pass. Now. We go into live classification, I can show you my test setup. So what I've got here is the Nordic Thingy53, and then on my phone I've downloaded the Nordic Edge Impulse app, which allows you to collect data from the Nordic 53 and upload it directly into our platform and classify the data in the platform so you can see how it perform on device. So I'm just going to set up a new testing record session, and we're going to pick a start height. Let's do 0 0.3 meters. I've got a tape measure here which goes from 0 to about 70, 80 centimetres, which gives me a good range to, to try this out on. And I'm going to choose a sample length of about 3 seconds to give me time to drop it when the light goes off, and 100 hertz of frequency. So if we go back to Edge Impulse, I can show you this in action. I'm going to start our first test from 30 centimetres. give or take, and you can see it classifying over in Edge Impulse, and if we go over to, there we go, we're getting a nice window just when we start to drop it of about 30, 36 centimetres, and that's to be expected, and we can ignore basically all of the rest of these results because they're not exactly where we want them, and we've only simulated uh, our, our simulation only covers drops from exactly the point of drop to two seconds. Um, so the point of drop and then a rest for two seconds. So some of the rest of these will, will be erroneous as expected. But that's um, really promising there. We've got two results around the point of the drop where uh, it's predicted the correct height. Now let's try a different height, perhaps 0 0.5 metres. Okay, so there we go, we went for 0 0.5 and we've ended up with something in the range of 10 centimetres there. Let's try one more time, going for 0 0.4 metres.
There we go. 0.37, that's pretty good. Now let's try one last time from 0.5 meters and see what happens. You can see at the drop, we're getting about 0.46, 0.5 meters, which is pretty good, considering that this is quite a large object, it has quite a big range. So today we were able to create a model that worked to a certain extent using physics simulation to generate our data. Obviously it wasn't perfect and you could vastly improve the accuracy of your model and the sort of accuracy compared to the real world if you introduce all of the proper kind of constants and uh, variables that uh, are encapsulated within your simulated environment. But what it shows is that it's a really great starting point for those situations where you don't have any data or where you have a rich simulated uh, environment such as you know FMEA applications like ANSYS for uh, consumer products or uh, other, other such kind of simulations that you already have for your product. You can use that data to simulate stuff. All the materials for this project will be available in the link below via GitHub and, and, and this project will be live as well. So hopefully it gives you a little bit of an insight into one way of going about generating physics simulation data for a data set. Now I hope you've enjoyed this short walkthrough and I'll be back with more very soon.